Today, I'm going to be talking about metric threading on this 1941 lathe. So recently, uh, I was repairing a vise, a Chinese-made rotating vise, and um, I kind of got it in parts, and I needed to make a big nut to go on the lead screw. And I encountered for the first time the fact that I cannot do metric threading on this lathe. So I've since done a little research. I found the concept of transposing gears that you can put in this gear train. Um, looked at a 3747 gear. Uh, there's also a 107 something or other gear. And, and in doing so, I made an Excel spreadsheet to list out for me when I would use the transposing gear and when I would change out the stud gear. And here is, a, here is a shot of the chart that I came up with. So in looking at the transposing gear and looking at the percentage of error that the transposing gear introduces, one of the things I realized is that the stud gear itself can simply be changed out and that can give you metric threading capabilities. So then I said to myself, why don't I just make some stud gears? Rather than buying a transposing gear and trying to design a yoke to install it, and I still have to make an extended stud gear to stretch out to engage the large gear of the transposing gear. So I said, why don't I just make some replacement stud gears and see if it works? So that is what I'm about. We're going to make some uh, extra gears to replace the stud gear to be able to do metric threading on this lathe. And what better material to make your stud gear out of than HDPE? This is half inch thick HDPE, high density polyethylene. It makes excellent gears. This came from Goodwill, $1.91. And I have to note, I did purchase it as is. So, you know, I guess I just have to take that caveat. So we're going to see if for $1.91, if we can make some metric gears for the South Bend Lake. The first step is a sanity check. I'm a computer guy. I do some programming. And whenever you are extending out uh, a... Um, equation or an algorithm that you think reflects reality, one of the first things you do is you subject it to a sanity test. Something simple, something fast, to confirm that your calculations make some sense in reality. So if you look on this chart, on the fifth line down, you will see that it says that with a standard 24 tooth stud gear, and setting the QC or, or uh, setting the um, the quick change to 32 threads per inch, that it should very closely approximate a 0.8 metric thread count. So let's set it up, run a point, run a, a 32 TPI thread, and see if that closely approximates a 0.8 metric thread. So I have chucked up in here just a, a scrap piece of aluminum. I have the quick change gearbox. I have that set to 32 teeth per inch. So, we'll just uh, scribe a little bit of a bit of a thread on here and just see what it looks like. Go ahead and engage my half nut just to So that made a thread. So let's see if a 0.8 metric thread is indistinguishable from what I just created. That looks absolutely perfect. Okay. So sanity check is passed. So now let's make, make a 19 tooth 
gear. Okay, using a little uh, free gear design program that I found called Gear DXF, uh, it gives us quick specs on the gear. So a 19 tooth gear of 18 dot pitch is going to have an OD of 1.167 and the total tooth depth from touch off to the root of the tooth is going to be 0.122. So we're going to need to produce a 1.167 diameter disc out of this HDPE and then cut the teeth on it. First thing I need though is a 5 8 arbor to hold it. So the stud gear on this lathe uses a 5 8 arbor. So I will first take this bolt and we'll turn it down to a 5 8 arbor with a half inch driving end. So we're at 817, we're going to 500. This material, whatever it is, how it cuts, <clears throat> I presume that it's HDPE. It's a half inch thick cutting board. That's usually what they're made of, but I guess we'll find out. So I have mounted the, uh, the new blank into the three jaw used a test indicator to confirm that it's uh, flat. We have about four thousandths total runout. We'll now bore a 5 8 hole and do the keyway. So start by drilling. All right, little rotary phase converter. how this plastic, whatever kind of plastic it is, I'm not sure that it's HDPE, but whatever it is, still kind of learning how it cuts. All right, boring bar. I have five tool holders, including a cutoff. I try to keep a boring bar in one of them. because it just makes life fast. All my tool holders are homemade. One of these days I'll put it on my list to make some more tool holders. Alright, so we want this to be fairly close, so I will get out the snap gauges. If my shop is a mess, I mean, usually know where to find things. Alright. Should be something like 595 right now. That's exactly what it is. Alright, so we're going for 625. Yeah, we're at about 5.95. 
96. I took the old gear off and measured it, and it's actually 624. So we'll go for 624. Six twenty and a half. Six twenty four on the money. So now it also has a A 188 keyway. Okay, I'm gonna look for and or grind up a um, keyway cutter for that size. I'll bring it back. Okay, so it turns out I already had a 188 keyway cutter, so I've installed it in this uh, in this boring bar. I made the boring bar, as you can see. Uh, the boring bar just has a hole through there, a tapped hole here, so you slide the round tool in and clamp it down. <coughs> the bits that go in it look like this. That's the that's the cutting edge, and you just clamp that in. And so. I have the tool on center, so all we have to do is bring it over to where it's going to be inclined to cut the keyway and draw it back and forth. So with each pass, it's taken out a little slice. It's kind of acting like a wood chisel, to be honest. Wouldn't want to do this all day. It would be hard on your uh, hard on your lathe on the way. It's just sliding back and forth under this pressure, but to do it occasionally. So, four of six twenty four, keyway depth of six eighty eight. It turned out <coughs> banjo's down out of the way, and this thing ought to slide right off. And it does. Nice and tight too. So next, we will turn the blank down to its prescribed OD using our mandrel. So there's the final mandrel. Give or take half inch over here. This dimension is not critical. It's going to be held in a chuck. This is exactly five eighths, and then a five eighths dash eleven thread so that the blank can be held in tight. Chuck that up in the three jaw. Close enough is close enough. What I mean by that is I don't need to put it in the four jaw and true it up to the thousandth. 
being true within a you know a thousandth or so is fine. According to our printout, our gear OD should be 1.167. Our current gear OD is 1.219. I really like this Norman Patent tool post. I think every bit as much as I would like a a QCTP. Having said that, it's not repeatable. There's a guy on the internet that kind of breaks down how to make one that has like a flat so that it is repeatable. And I, I can definitely see how that could be interesting. Maybe one of these days. Alright. And I will just touch off. see one problem I'm going to have. I'm going to have to put a spacer between the nut and the blank because otherwise my gear cutters are going to hit the nut. There it is, 1.167. So, the gear blank is board, keyed, and now to OD. Now we move over to the mill. I'll bring you back. 